computer? Yes. So we are recording this now. Uh, I, uh, we already got good coverage from the New Start, which was really exciting. They took my press release and uh, published it on their online version um, and shared it on Facebook. And so uh, there was a lot of good reaction to that. I was really excited to see that. So it was right. a really cool thing. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask Bob to say a few words about who we are and what we do, uh, Louisiana Master Naturalists, for anyone who might not know, and um, also where, how the Dorman Award came about. Good. Well, uh, welcome, everybody. It's always good to see y'all. My gosh, it's been, been a while for some of you. But uh, uh, the, we have a state Master Naturalist program, and, and I'm, I'm president of it at the moment. Uh, and it's called the Louisiana Master Naturalist Association. And we're broken down into seven chapters at some of the larger cities in the state. And uh, uh, of course, Betty represents uh, uh, the Northeast chapter. And uh, we may, before we get off, if we have time, we'll, we'll kind of go around and let everybody just say their names and what chapter they're from. But uh, <clears throat> we started in about uh, 2011. Uh, and um, we had actually had a couple of meetings before that to talk about a, a state uh, program. And at the time, we were going to emulate what some other states have done in that we would really kind of be underneath uh, the LSU Ag Center. And uh, that's certainly what they do in, in Texas, but it's Texas Park, uh, Parks Department that, uh, uh, that they're under. And other states are sort of that way. They all have some kind of state affiliation. And, um, and it, it just, you know, we'd, we'd get really excited and, and have great ideas. And it was a wonderful group of people from all over the state. And then we'd leave and not think about it anymore. <laughs> and then we'd get another call. And we'd go back in. We did that two or three times. Uh, well, the last time we did it, uh, when I was driving back home, I just said, you know, if you're going to start an organization, somebody's just got to dive in. And uh, uh, so when, when I got home, I sat down and sent emails out to about 30 people in New Orleans, the greater New Orleans area, and just said, hey, we're interested in doing this. Um, would you be interested in, uh, in helping us organize it? And, and I had, when I ran the Louisiana Nature Center in East New Orleans, uh, I had uh, contacted the Ag Center a couple of times. That's sort of where it got its roots, but they just, kept putting it off because they didn't have the staff. And then uh, uh, finally we dove in and they said, well, we're gonna support you. And then their budgets got cut to the quick. So that's why we are all nonprofits. Uh, while LMNA is a nonprofit. And, um, but we have a real close association with a number of people at the Ag Center and, uh, and especially we have a MOU with uh, Wildlife and Fisheries. And, uh, and, and if you go throughout the chapters, we have lots of connections to all the relevant uh, organizations in the state that do wildlife conservation, uh, especially nature type education. Uh, I think all the nature centers in the state are in some way affiliated with us, at least their staff members are. And, um, and we've just expanded one chapter at a time. And now, as I said, we've got seven. Uh, everybody's having a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of variety uh, as we founded those chapters. Um, I know there was always questions about, well, you know, we're not in New Orleans, we're a smaller uh, population area. And we consistently said, you don't have to emulate what we do in a large city, um, but you could be large in a small town. Uh, you know, it's just what, whatever you want to do. The main thing is that we have rules that, uh, that you should, uh, you, you've got to pay dues. So there's a little bit of money floating around to help the chapter, uh, very small dues. Uh, you've got to annually do some volunteer work in the field of natural history. Uh, you've got to do uh, continuing education and there's a number of ways you can do continuing ed. And, um, uh, and, uh, and then you've got to have regular meetings and put on some kind of training workshops. In. It's just that easy. And, uh, and, and you know, for real small venues, uh, those can be pretty small workshops. Uh, we, we have consistently 25 to 30 in our workshops in New Orleans, but some are only having seven or eight, but that's great. It's a good group of people. They're probably, 
they're probably actually learning more than you do in a group of 30. But, um, but I could see in the future that uh, a couple of naturalists in a, a really small town uh, might say, well, let's just start a chapter. It'll just be fun, even if it's the two of us meeting for coffee and talking about nature and going on birding walks and things like that. I see that happening. Sooner or later, it will. And uh, that absolutely can meet every criterion for being a chapter of Louisiana Master Naturalist. So the concept is nature education. Focus on Louisiana, but of course, when you talk about uh, environmental concepts and uh, conservation, you're going to cross borders because Mother Nature doesn't have, doesn't recognize political borders. But mostly we focus in, in the state. Each of our chapters is in a different location in the state. They tend tend to focus more on the natural history of their areas. And, uh, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, and now the board is talking about such things as uh, figuring out a way for the, all the chapters to sort of contri contribute to some central learning pattern, pow uh, uh, patterns. And we've had people that got certified with us go up and take the programs in Baton Rouge and Acadiana because they wanted to learn about those areas. And then they actually, because maybe they work there, they then affiliated with that chapter and left our chapter. And that's, that's the way it should work. Uh, but I see the day when we get that um, uh, excited person who says, I'm going to affiliate with every chapter in the state by taking every one of their series of workshops so that I can really learn that somebody's going to do that. You know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already have people that are like that. They just haven't taken that step yet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but, that, but that's basically who we are, where we came from. It, it started a long time ago with some conversations. And then finally, we just dove in. And, uh, we, uh, and it's, it's sad that we're not affiliated with a statewide organization. But it really is, it certainly doesn't limit us. And we totally understand what was going on financially in the state when that happened. So we just solved the problem by all becoming 501c3s and uh, structuring the fees for our workshops in a way that it supports the meager amount of money that we need to run our, our program. Nobody gets paid, uh, at least nobody who's associated with our chapters. We do, a lot of us give honoraria to our uh, teachers that are not in any way affiliated with us. But, uh, but we're lean and mean, and we're having a whole heck of a lot of fun. And we, now, we started a couple of years ago a rendezvous, an annual rendezvous, where all the chapters come into one place and we have workshops and field trips and the like. We had to cancel this year for obvious reasons. But next year, we'll be back up in Pollock at Camp Hartner. And uh, after that, we go to, uh, to the Lake Charles area where the Southwest chapter uh, will sponsor it. And from here on out, we rotate among chapters so we can get around the state. But that's basically it. If you have any other questions, just send me an email. But the, the Caroline Dorman Award came up. We, we had had a lot of conversations that we wanted to recognize really, 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 really outstanding naturalists in our state because we have a bunch of them. We have some really, really uh, well-educated and high-performance people that love nature in this state. And uh, so we looked around for somebody to name it after that would have statewide uh, had statewide impact, and um, uh, we were unanimous in choosing Caroline Dorman, which I assume everybody in the in the room knows who Caroline was. But if you don't, she was uh, uh, from Briarwood uh, in northern uh, Natchitoches Parish, and uh, she loved nature, and she did. She had many firsts. Um, she was the um, uh, Let's see, she, she actually founded Kasachi. She was the reason that we have Kasachi National Forest. She founded, was pushed the founding of the State Arboretum uh, down at Chico. Uh, she was, um, oh gosh, all of a sudden I just went blank. She was the first in the um, forestry service. First woman. First woman, in the, yeah, to be employed by the uh, US Forestry Service. And that's why she had the power, I think, to do some of the things that she did. Plus, she was a brilliant person. And she loved wildflowers. And she wrote several books that really kind of focused on wildflowers and conservation in Louisiana. And then, of course, when, when uh, she passed on, Briarwood became uh, 
a, a place that not only memorialized her, but uh, most of us see it more as a nature center than anything else. I mean, it's definitely a nature preserve. So her, uh, her legacy lives on, and we thought that she would be a great person to name a statewide award for. Thank you. I did not know that she was responsible for Kasachi. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Thank you, Bob. Right. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to tell you some things about our current, um, our uh, recipient of the award for 2020. And I'm going to screen share to do that, which means your thumbnails are going to jump <laughs> over to the side uh, and you've got to scroll through them if you want to see other people, because I'm going to put my screen and my PowerPoint uh, right in your face. So here goes. So our uh, Carolyn Dorman, outstanding Louisiana naturalist for 2020 is Kelby Uchley, another name that is well known to a lot of people throughout Louisiana for very good reasons. So let me share some things. Uh, first of all, the basic education, Kelby uh, attended Texas A&M University, got Bachelor of Science in Wildlife Biology and a Master's Degree in Wildlife and Fisheries there. Uh, and he then spent a 30 plus year career uh, with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in the National Wildlife Refuges uh, Program. A couple of the things he's uh, known for in his time there, uh, he studied and worked with alligators in the Gulf Coast marches. Uh, and I'm a guessing, but I don't, I've never thought of asking Kelby this, but that that, was, that experience was a part of the genesis of his book about the American alligator, that that certainly has a deep knowledge. Uh, some work with can, can Canada geese on the Hudson Bay. But the one I want to spend a little bit more time on is the Malasi unit of the Upper Washita River uh, National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, that's because, you know, I'm, I'm looking down the road, uh, folks, and those of you who are uh, statewide board members, uh, this chapter is going to host Rendezvous. I think it's now pushed out to 2023. Uh, but this is one of the places that we will probably try to arrange a field trip to so that you can see this uh, Malasi unit of the Upper Washita NWR. Uh, the Upper Washita NWR is quite huge. And as you can see, it's right uh, on the map, if you can see that much detail. It's, it extends from the Arkansas border uh, almost down to where we are. Uh, you have to drive a bit to get up there, but it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, and Kelby was deeply involved, uh, along with his brother, Keith, who worked for the Nature Conservancy, were deeply involved in a massive restoration project uh, of, in, that, uh, in that National Wildlife Refuge, 19,000 acre restoration. Uh, that included, involved uh, reconnecting the Washita River with its floodplain. And uh, uh, my favorite story about that is that the river didn't wait for them to finish. <laughs> they, uh, it was a private-public uh, partnership, the Malasi Farms, the uh, Wildlife and Fisheries, and the Louisiana Nature Conservancy were all involved in that. And they prepared this, the site, which a levee had been built, obviously, to turn it into farmland. And it was farmland for a number of years. I don't know how long, but quite some time. Uh, and so they planted trees and did some other things to get ready. And then in the spring of 2009, the river had waited long enough uh, and we had enough rain that it, uh, they were gonna blow holes in the levee and the river just overtopped the levee uh, when we had some heavy rain. Uh, and made its own holes and restored itself to its floodplain. Uh, and so really all they had to do was enlarge the holes. And I don't know what all else, but that was the, one of the fun stories about it is that it seems to me that when you work with Mother Nature instead of against her, she helps you in interesting ways sometimes. So uh, that's how that came about. Uh, it was a, a very significant project that was covered by the New York Times and maybe Kelby will tell us a little bit more about it. I have not been up there uh, it's one of the places I want to get to. I'm not sure why I haven't made it up there yet, but at certain times of year, it attracts extraordinary numbers of birds. Uh, and I wish Jeff Barnhill was on the cost because Jeff goes up there with some regularity. So that's one of Kelby's ma major accomplishments and contributions to Louisiana is the Malasi unit on the Upper Washita. Of course, I must talk about Black Bayou Lake National Wildlife Refuge, which is... Uh, well, it's very nearby. Uh, Kelby's vision in working very, very hard to get this area made into a National Wildlife Refuge was that he saw it as a site that was a unique 
and valuable site for education. So I, I got this aerial view. The, the heavy gold line here is the boundary of uh, the refuge. And as you can see, it is surrounded by settlements, okay? Uh, here's Swartz in the lower right-hand corner. I live out there. Uh, this is all North Monroe, but all of Monroe is the lower left corner of your screen, goes on out of the picture. Uh, up Highway 165, which is getting people you know, all up and down it uh, and, and businesses. And uh, this must be a house. I think this interesting pattern from the air is a housing development. Uh, but Sterlington, the town of Sterlington is right north of it here. And so, you, you know, Black Bayou Lake is surrounded by settlements of people. And so Kelby's, Kelby's vision was it would be a perfect place to do wildlife, natural, environmental conservation education. And so uh, he got this done. And um, he also saw the need and, and was instrumental in forming a Friends of Black Bayou. Uh, we, at NWR, we have a wonderful and amazing friends group that has done astonishing things out there. Uh, there's a nature center that a visitor center that has a nature store and exhibits it has a there's an education center that has a live alligator exhibit in it that they just raised money to refurbish and reopen it had had to be closed for a time uh, the friends group uh, runs a fall celebration and master naturalist is out there recruiting and and contributing to that every year uh, and they do a program called first saturdays for kids and more that i can't tell you but the Friends Group has really helped uh, Black Bayou realize uh, the vision of an educate of a of a place for people to come, uh, and it is much loved by the people of this area. It's it's really and this is clearly again a master naturalist. When you come up here for your uh, for our rendezvous when we host it in 2023, uh, this is one of the places that we will absolutely take you. Um, and Bob Thomas, I have to tell you, we have lots of snakes at. Black Bayou Good. Lake, WR, lots of snakes. Uh, <laughs> it, I, you know, it was at first, I, I, but I can't even go out there anymore. I, almost every trip, I see at least one snake, which is really unusual for me. I'm not that good at spotting snakes, but we have lots of them. It's very- That's not amazing. lots. That's not lots, Betty. It, 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 <laughs> I no. said one is not lots. No. Well, but, no but I, I understand what you mean. <laughs> and I go out there a lot. I go out there a lot. <laughs> Birds, the birders will love it. We have lots of birds. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful place. We have a full-time ranger uh, and uh, it's a great resource for master naturalists. We have many of our workshops out there. Uh, and in fact, you know, this, I have to tell you that this, at this moment in preparing this presentation, uh, I had to use all of my discipline uh, that I have to resist going off into a lengthy PowerPoint ex show mm -hmm. of my, photographs. But here's just a few. Uh, this is in the upper left is uh, uh, Nova Clark, our full-time ranger with uh, Grumpy, one of her uh, uh, pine snakes. Uh, in the lower left corner, John Carr. This is our herpetology workshop and John Carr conducted it. Uh, he's a herpetologist at the university here. Um, and you will see he, he spent nine to three with us and then met us again in, in, at, in evening uh, and took us out for a night walk to uh, identify frogs by their sound and et cetera, et cetera. We had a ball. And in that photograph, he is taking up, there's a little teeny frog that you cannot see sitting on that stick and he's taking a picture of it with his phone. Uh, so that was our Herps walk workshop uh, at Black Bayou. Uh, sun, the pier is being rebuilt right now. It has been closed for a while because it got undermined by floodwaters, but it's being rebuilt right now. Uh, of course, we have lots of alligators uh, wildflowers and this photograph of the uh, of the this is a damselfly. I, I'm really proud of this photograph. Happened it. This damselfly has just emerged. You can still see the exuvia right underneath the body of the damselfly um, on that little strand of grass. Uh, he has just emerged. He is not even dry yet. So uh, uh, sitting there and um, uh, uh, an orange bluet, which uh, it's the only photograph of an orange bluet I have from out there. But that's from some experts on iNaturalist who helped me identify that. So anyway, many wonders and many beautiful things to see out at Black Bayou Lake NWR. We are forever grateful to have this wonderful resource in our community. Uh, Heartwood. I didn't even put this on um, my nomination of Kelby for this award, 
but I have to talk about Hartwood a little bit because it, it enables me to tell my favorite of all times, uh, Kelby Uchley story. Uh, Hartwood Natural Area is where Kelby and Amy live. It's a uh, natural heritage, it's a program, it's a site in the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries Natural Heritage Program. It's a fragment of upland hardwood forest, about 13 acres that they have built by picking up whatever little parcels of land they could over time. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, Kelby did a program, uh, one of his radio shows on upper hardwood uh, forests. And I contacted him and said, Kelby, where can we see? I want to take my natural naturalist to see uh, somebody's got some noise going on. I don't know who that is. Can we mute? There. Okay. Um, I said, Kelby, I really, where can I take my master naturalist for them to see some upland hardwood forest? And he said, well, this is the only fragment I know of that's left. And so we went out to the Uchley place and had a wonderful time. Um, and we went for a hike and Kelby showed us a lot of things and explained a lot of things. And uh, one of the things I just stuck in a little photograph of, he's got a Northern red oak out there. We're not quite sure where it came from or how it would be that there's a Northern, not a Southern, but a Northern red oak. in uh, uh in that part of the cut but there it but there it is uh it's a beautiful area and kelby has been gen gently guiding it back to being what it's supposed to be it too was at one point i think the stand of trees there now is about 140 some years old uh it at one time was pretty much cleared for for farming as well and a pipeline goes around it and that's the story that i i have to tell you uh kelby and amy were gone at one time and they came home to find surveyors flags marching across Hartwood. Um, and you know, to me that just sort of emblem uh, is emblematic of the, the people who uh, don't ask permission, they're just certain that they're gonna get to do what they wanna do. And they went in and surveyed Hartwood to run a pipeline through it uh, while the Uchleys were gone. Uh, and as Amy Uchley says, they didn't know Kelby Uchley. Uh, so today, to make a long story short, folks, the pipeline goes around Hartwood. It does not go through Hartwood, and I'm forever grateful uh, that Hartwood got preserved. So uh, it's a beautiful spot. Uh, here's Kelby's books, or at least three of them. He has uh, actually uh, six. Uh, the American Alligator book I mentioned before, uh, very uh, uh, authoritative uh, book about the American Alligator. Bayou, I'm going to say more about biodiversity in a minute, but that's Ray, Kelby's long-standing radio program, which he's turned into books and a Facebook page, etc. cetera. Um, and he's, these two books, uh, Biodiversity One and Two, are, Kelby has a real way with words, uh, you know, uh, that's not necessarily that comes with being a naturalist, but Kelby writes beautifully, and he's found an audience for his words. Um, Flora and Fauna of the Civil War is another of his books, and Iron Branch is a novel. And he and Amy together produced a book called Nature Words. It's a little dictionary or glossary, whatever you prefer. Um, and I keep it handy at all times. It's an extremely valuable little book for those of us who come to our passion for the outdoors, for nature and for the environment uh, from other disciplines and don't have the vocabulary always to talk about it. Uh, Kelby's uh, Biodiversity Radio Show um, it has, again, like I said, morphed. It's been going on since 1995. Kelby writes it and he voices it and it's broadcast on KEDM, our local uh, public radio affiliate. Um, and I have helped with, in my 20 some years in Northeast Louisiana, have helped with countless uh, uh, fundraisers for KEDM. Uh, and it is, and one of the questions that's always asked people who call in to donate is, what's your favorite shows? and biodiversity shows up over and over and over again. He has re literally meet, reached hundreds of thousands of people with that show. And now you can follow it on Facebook. This is the Facebook page. You just search for bayou-diversity uh, and you'll find the Facebook page. And, and I, just, I just went and got this screen capture last night uh, and if you can read the text at the top of this post at the top of the page, uh, biodiversity has just garnered 5,000 page likes uh, and active followers. So uh, yeah, and uh, uh, Kelby posted that just last night. So wonderful place. Uh, and you can also listen to tapes of his radio broadcasts uh, 
uh, get his podcast. He has a website, etc. So that's a few things about Kelby Uchley, uh, some of the major things he's done. Um, and, uh, and, and here, fi here finally, here are the goodies uh, that I need to deliver to Kel Kelby. Uh, but there is the uh, award on the right hand side and, and the shirt that we will give him on the left. And I'm now going to turn it back over. I'm going to quit screen sharing so we can see faces and turn it back over to Bob. Wait, you need to unmute yourself, Bob. Oh, you're right. You're right. Good gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I forget to mute, then I forget to unmute. Uh, I, uh, I just wanted to, um, uh, we're just very excited about Kelby uh, in this award because it's so, so highly warranted. And uh, he's demonstrated that for an entire career. And um, I, I do want to acknowledge that Amy is sitting there beside him and she is an incredible uh, addition to the expansion of natural history knowledge in our state. And so we're very proud that their family uh, is uh, doing what they do and continues to do it. I, a, a little story that I told the board at our last board meeting as we closed out <clears throat> is that, um, you know, Kelby gave a keynote address to our, our rendezvous at Chico uh, a couple of years ago. And, uh, and he and I were sitting uh, at the Arboretum having a conversation. And um, we figured out that uh, that's when I found out that he went to A&M. And I was, I was at A&M between 71 and, and uh, 77, or 76 when I got my PhD. But, uh, but anyway, he and I overlapped. <laughs> and we were in the same department. And we were in the same building. And I'm sure he was there as much as I was, just constantly. But I was in the basement where the herpetology collections were. And Kelby, I think, was on the top floor. Is that right, Kelby? Yes, that's right. <laughs> so how he and I didn't know one another, except that he was in the wildlife end of the department and I was in the systematics and evolution end of the department. But it's just weird that uh, I thought I knew everybody in that building. But, uh, but I followed his career with great pride. And then we, we have another guy up in his neck of the woods that got his PhD at A&M right behind me. And that's John Carr that you saw all ago. Uh, we were we had the same major professor at graduate school. So um, that's all that's always fun as well. But anyway, uh, Kelby, we are so pleased to, to uh, uh, that you've earned this award. I don't want to say give you the award. You have earned this award. You've been a guiding light in a lot of discussion of natural history in this state. And uh, I have my uh, two copies of the book right here in my hands and uh so and, and i have i have all your books but uh uh but at any rate um great contributions to our state uh, uh, uh an obvious person to win the dorman award uh this is the third time we've given it the first time was to uh dr charles allen and uh then the second one uh was to uh vernon, vernon. brew vernon brew who's a, a an entomologist of the top order uh, as a, uh, I guess what you'd say, he's really a, a, in the amateur class, but he's at the professional level of an amateur class. Uh, an amazing, if you haven't ever met Vernon and you see he's speaking somewhere, run to see him. But we're real proud of our recipients and uh, each one of them brings something new to the table. And so without further ado, uh, Kelby, uh, congrats so much and we're so pleased we're sorry that we didn't weren't able to give you this in person at the rendezvous but but I think you've uh, you've agreed if time allows for you to give a keynote at our next rendezvous so people can see you again right right That's, congrats I think he's already got that on his calendar because I emailed Good. Him right away <laughs> but, yeah. yes this next rendezvous will be in next spring at Camp Hardner uh, and Calby plans to be there thank you That's right Thank you, Nancy. Yes. Yeah, people, you can clap. There is a, you know, you can, <laughs> if your actions can be clapping. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. There is a clap on there. Uh, Kelby and Amy, I will either drive out to Hartwood or meet you all somewhere, but uh, I will get the goodies into your hands as soon as possible uh, because we want you to have them. So it's a beautiful piece of glass and it's a great shirt. So 
Uh, do you, you want to say a word or two, Kelby? You, what, what, I told you this is not your speech, but you certainly can say a word or two. Well, I, I really don't know what there is to say. It's especially rewarding for me because, you know, I consider this award coming from, uh, from members of my tribe here. <laughs> and, uh, that is all of you that uh, I know love natural history and love learning about it and especially because you are advocates for the wise use of our natural resources and it, it really means a lot to me uh it, it it's amazing to me also that we can sit out here in the woods and we live pretty far out in the woods we can't see our neighbors uh we're on the edge of the darbon swamp we are we were hermits to start with, but are especially so now. And that uh, it's amazing that we can have all of you join us out here right now. I wish you were here other than in a virtual manner so that we could go on a, a, a nature hike here. And we could show you some of our favorite things and, and learn some of the very special things that y'all could teach us too. But um, I am very honored and thank you very much. You're welcome. And that, and that reminds me of, you know, when we went out to the Uchleys, we walked and hiked and learned about the upwood, uh, hardwood, upland hardwood forest. But, and then we had a meeting on their deck, which overlooks this beautiful ravine in, the, in their backyard. Uh, and I'm up, you know, leaned against the rail facing the group and conducting the meeting. And all of a sudden I lose everybody's attention. It's just gone. I can tell that they are not paying any attention. A hawk, a red, a red shouldered hawk, I believe it was, flew behind me. And so <laughs> when you have a bunch of naturalists uh, in a place <laughs> like that, you can lose their attention real fast when something like that happens. It was great, great fun. And I hope that we will soon be able to contemplate uh, coming out to Hartwood again. So, and, and indeed, maybe when, and by 2023, when we do rendezvous up here, um, maybe we can arrange a field trip to Hartwood. I think that would be a great thing for people to see uh, because again, it's not, it's, it's a little uh, niche that you don't see every day in this part of the country anymore. So. Thank you all for joining us. Um, uh, Danielle, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact me or Kelby directly. Uh, but thank you for being here to cover this event. Um, and the rest of you, see y'all later. I'm going to end this meeting. Bye-bye. Thank y'all very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations.